Okay, so function composition. This is an example of a topic which is actually quite simple, but might be considered as um, as very advanced. So it's like, well, we do it first because one, well, we can. So let's say we have the uh, just to rem remind ourselves, we have this function ink that just adds one. And we also have, that's for incrementing, and we also have dec, it's for decrementing. Okay, just to keep it simple, uh, we use these ones. It's not particularly exciting functions, but um, yeah, we don't want to overload ourselves in the beginning. So we also know that, well, if I read this, I have a nested function calls. So what this would evaluate to, this would evaluate to um, two, three. Okay, because we start with one. Uh, so we increment one and that's, um, you know, we can write it out, the, um, the process. So it will get to this. So once this part is evaluated, well, that's the result is two and it goes there and it's evaluated to three. Okay, so that's fine. And then nothing uh, surprising here. But I can get to the same result in a different way. So I can I can say this. I can use function composition. And I can compose ink with itself. And let's say if I want to apply this function to one, then well, okay, well it evaluates to, to three. So what's happening here? What is the difference between these two um, lines? So here, well, let's let's do the usual thing. Let's read how the uh, computer would read that. Oh, there is an opening parent, so I will need to do some work. Okay, what's the work? Well, there is another opening parent, so I don't know which function to call. I actually have to do some calculation, some computation in order to get that function, okay? So how do I get that function? Well, I will use function composition. Okay, well, um, I will do some um, some further explanation with the notebook. But the idea is that when you have two functions, you know, the functions are like this input-output mappings, input-output machines. And uh, if you have two of them, well, you take the output of the first one and feed that as the input of the second one. Okay, so you sort of chain them, and um, this is how you build uh, some more complicated functions. So here, what we do, while well, we are actually um, chaining ink with ink, and that creates a function, so we created a new function, and then, well, that, what's that function? That function is basically adding two, okay? And uh, now if we apply to one, we get a three. So that's the difference here. So here, uh, what we have is just we call ink twice, but here we create another function first before we, we call any function. Okay, so that's sort of the idea of function composition. So let's, um, let's do another example. What if I compose ink with deck? Again, it's a very silly example. And if I put uh, 42 in, well, what do I get? Well, I get 42, because what happens? First, I decrement it, so I get 41. Then I increment it, I get back to 42. So, well, we did function composition to, to have something which is, is basically the identity for, for numbers. Uh, by the way, we have the identity um, for anything else. So here's the usual text. Yeah, you know, it just gives you back that. Okay, so we have a function for that, but um, we are practicing a function composition here. And um, well, let's have a look at the notebook. Okay, so well, let's use mathematical notation. So f of x equals x plus 1. That's our function ink. Okay, let's call it g of x equals 
x minus 1. That's our function dec decrementing. And um, well, what I can do, for example, if I say that what is the f of f of um, let's put the number there f of 1 you know that would be the f of 2 because f of 1 is 2 and this will be 3 but I can also um, imagine the the following situation I can consider you know it's like f as a little machine I use these boxes for that so so one goes in and if we have F there so then two comes out okay and now I, I can I can put that into uh, another F another ink so then three comes out And that's that's exactly this one. So it's the f of f of one, because well, if you think about it, this, is, you know, this is x. What comes out is f of x, and now what comes out is the f of the input, which happens to be f of x there. Okay, but so this is just a nested function call. What's the difference when we talk about composition? Well, the idea is that. You know, we, we just consider this as another function. So this, draw this sort of machine box around it. So this would be f composed with f, again, using mathematical notation. But if we are in closure, we would say comp f and f. Okay, so that's the same thing. So now this evaluates to to this big function and and it's like okay I can forget about what's inside I can just say that well this is f composed with f so one goes in and um, three comes out and same way it's like I can I can talk about uh, so what is f composed with G. Okay, so now that's a that's a function for that, and I apply it to to one, and that will be you know it's a g of one would be uh, zero, f of zero would be one, so that's just one. Okay, well we did the same calculation here. So well that's the that's the idea of the uh, function composition that we put together two functions and we treat it as one as a single function, but the internal mechanism is just a nested call of functions. So back to the code. Um, let's just say a few more words about um, comp. Is that um, you can actually use more than two functions. Okay, so this would be like uh, I'm chaining together ink, uh, four copies of, of those. And if I apply it to zero, well, what do I get? I expect four, and I get four. Okay, so um, this is not particularly um, surprising. What could be more surprising is that um, you can um, have just one argument. Okay. So it's like, oh, what would be the result here? And it gives you 10. So it's basically just calling ink once. Uh, there is a sensible default value here. And the default value is the identity function. You know, the f of x equals x. That just returns the, the argument. So it might look crazy enough, but um, if you just call comp without any anything, that um, that works as the identity. Okay, that's just a sort of an edge case. I mean, if you look at that, um, evaluate that. Uh, this is actually a function, and it's okay. This is really just the identity function. So, function composition is like uh, well, we can 
we have two or more functions that um, can be changed through the input output uh, then we can build something um, a function which is uh, more complicated gives um, a more complex uh, data transformation um, we will use this later okay we did it in the beginning it's just because we could and it's uh, proving that it's an advanced concept which is actually a very simple idea